Hey, whoa, come back here. Get in this Pokeball. No, 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 no. Don't you walk away from me, young man. You will get in this Pokeball and you will like it. Hello, everyone. So they did it. Pokemon has finally entered the world of free roaming real time shenanigans, and my dreams of harassing Pokemon and bonking them on the head as I yeet Pokeballs in every direction have finally come true. As soon as I put Pokemon Legends Arceus into my Switch for the first time and no zany professor appeared on screen, I breathed a sigh of relief. This, along with so many other changes, breathes fresh, beautiful, lavender-scented air into a series that had become seriously bogged down. But before we get too far ahead of ourselves, let's touch on the most groundbreaking feature of all, and that is free camera movement. Look at me go. I can look over here and here and here. I can look everywhere. That's right, the whole game, unlike Pokemon Sword and Shield, has free camera movement. I love that in 2021 with Skyward Sword and now 2022 with Pokemon Legends Arceus, both games have included camera movement as a major feature. <sighs> Never change, Nintendo, you crazy mongooses. Mongoose? Is mongoose the plural of mongoose? Or is it just mongoose? Oh god, English. Now I did say that the game doesn't initially open with a zany professor, but that doesn't mean that there isn't one in the game. And after I concluded that I couldn't run into the ocean, I had to help this zany professor catch the starter Pokemon. By actually throwing Pokeballs at them. <laughs> ah! And not in a let's go Pikachu and Eevee kind of way, catching Pokemon is now a seamless, fast paced, in real time experience and I flip and love it! I personally find the capture mechanic in this game just to be so satisfying. I mean the bonking sound effect alone as you hit a Pokemon directly in the face is enough to keep me coming back over and over again. It's incredible, they've actually managed to make a Pokemon game where I actively want to catch them all. My inner child is screaming right now. After I caught all of the starter Pokemon and returned them to the professor, I was introduced to the beautiful village of Jubilife and the Galaxy Expedition team. And because the mold of gym battles and trainers had been completely broken, I don't know, I just thought it was all so cool and it was the first time in decades that I found myself playing a Pokemon game and thinking, I, I have literally no idea what's gonna happen next. Like, this, this, is this what excitement feels like? I just wanted to get out there and explore the world and catch Pokemon and squeal in delight, but Instead, I had to wade my way through awkward, slow and boring dialogue that had no voice acting and feels so lifeless. It's not as bad as the NPC interruptions in Pokemon Sword and Shield, but my goodness, Pokemon games love to break gameplay flow by having a slow cutscene where someone tells you to meet them downstairs and then you physically have to break out of that cutscene, run downstairs, go into the next cutscene to talk to them, and then have another conversation. Just tell me what you had to say upstairs or teleport me. Ah! They should have just thrown you straight into one of the wild areas and you could optionally go up and ask for tips and tutorials or advice, but otherwise just, just let us free on the world. You need to trust your players, Pokemon. And if they're really worried about people getting lost, just leave a flashy sparkle above a character's head and players will naturally go up and talk to them once they've run out of things to do. Oh, and don't even get me started about the slow pans into every single dialogue scene. Anyway, sorry, big rant. Maybe there's some people out there that really like the dialogue in this game, but I am not one of those people. It just feels especially jarring and slow paced when the rest of the game is so dynamic and flows so well in my opinion. After grinding through exposition and watching Abra move at like 4 frames a second because there were too many character models on screen for the Switch to render, I finally got to choose my starter Pokemon. This is probably the most important decision of my whole life. What would Brock do in this situation? Do I go with the fire weasel, spinach owl, or water cat? Nah, no, I'm just joking, I'm being dramatic. For me, it was an easy choice. Rowlet for life, baby! I named my Rowlet Widget and then was given my first task in order to become a bona fide Team Galaxy member. And that task was to catch a freaking Bidoof! <laughs> a Bidoof! <laughs> there is literally nothing in the world that I want more than a Bidoof. As I sauntered my way out of the village to find a Bidoof, I threw Widget out of its Pokeball and it just, it just popped out right in front of me. Holy guacamole! I could go up and talk to it and zip it back into its Pokeball. I didn't even have to open a menu screen. This, this right here is a thing of beauty. As someone who's been around since the days of Pokemon Blue, I, th <laughs> I could just freaking throw it out of its Pokeball and it's right there. But it also got me thinking. 
Can I throw a Pokeball and have my Pokemon just fly out into someone's face? I carefully picked my target, warmed up my Pokeball throwing arm. But alas, you cannot throw a Pokeball at someone's face. And it turns out you also can't throw your Rowlet onto a roof. But the Pokeballs do bounce off walls, so that's pretty cool. I was a bit disappointed that I couldn't harass the village folk and make them live in fear of unforeseen Pokeball attacks, but I quickly forgot about this as I made my way out of town and had my first Pokemon battle. And there was no with black squiggly lines transition. The battle just happened then and there in the world where I was actually standing. And not only that, I could just run around wherever the heck I wanted. I ran over to my opponent's Togepi and attempted to kick it into the dirt. I mean, could you imagine if I just could run up and kick the Togepi and it flew off like Team Rocket into outer space? But unfortunately, your character can't physically hurt the other people's Pokemon. So instead, I ran around it to distract it whilst my Rowlet finished it off. I mean, I personally think that being able to stomp a Togepi would have been a good addition to the series, but I get that as a game for children, so it's probably not the best inclusion to have. With the battle behind me, I got to leave civilization and enter the wilderness, where I saw a flippin' Bidoof! Every orifice on my body began to sweat as I approached the Bucktooth Beauty. It must have been 40 to 50 pounds, plump at the hips, a real honker of a Bidoof. I closed my eyes, threw the Pokeball, and prayed. And I f caught it! <laughs> That's right, I just caught a Bidoof. I named my new friend Strudelpop, and we are now best friends, and we'll be best friends till the end of time. I also ended up getting curious and threw Strudelpop out of its Pokeball into some water, and it just started swimming. In fact, most of the Pokemon in the game can either fly over water, swim, or have a little floaty raft, which is just adorable. I caught the rest of the Pokemon I needed to become a member of the Galaxy Expedition Team, which were all like level two, and everyone in the Galaxy Expedition Team was like, oh my God, you're, in you're incredible, which is kind of concerning that they're so bad at their jobs that they think that that's a an achievement. But after grinding through the introduction that could have probably been half the length of what it was, I was finally a member of the Galaxy Expedition Team and was ready to go into the world and catch all the Pokemon I could ever dream of. Although Strudel Pop will always be my one and only, I didn't want to stop at one Bidoof because I will create a Bidoof army that will rise up and crush anyone that stands in our path. Take this and this and this. One Bidoof, two Bidoof, three Bidoof. This is where the main game loop comes into play and really, really begins to shine. You can sneak up on Pokemon in the wild in real time and each type of Pokemon will behave in different ways to your presence, either being naturally aggressive, flighty, or indifferent. You can then either just throw a Pokeball in an attempt to catch them, or you can just throw out your own Pokemon and initiate a battle to either defeat them or lower their health and catch them. In the space of three or four seconds, you can hit two Pokemon with Pokeballs, and whilst they're waiting to be caught, you could already be entering a battle with another Pokemon, and it's all happening in real time. Yes, all of this can be a little bit messy and chaotic, but the fact that there's so many things happening all at the same time and it's so dynamic, I just find it to be so much fun. Go Strudel Pop, you've got this! An Alpha Snorlax doesn't stand a chance against my Strudel Pop. No! As you roam around the wilderness, you can also throw your Pokemon at trees or mineral deposits to collect different materials that can be crafted into things like Pokeballs and potions. This means that there will always be a Pokemon or something that you can collect directly in your line of vision, which meant that I got lost and just ran around catching Pokemon and totally ignored the story for an hour or so. It's just so much fun running around and exploring, and my heart would skip a beat every time a Pokemon I hadn't seen before appeared on the horizon. The only thing that I think it's really lacking is that the landscapes of the world can feel pretty sparse and lack detail or complexity. Especially with things running at slow frame rates as the draw distance increases, and little dips in performance here and there. But for the most part, whilst you're playing the game, most of it you're not going to notice, and I think it actually runs pretty well. As for how it looks though... Well, this game can be pretty ugly. I like what they're going for and you do get sections where the landscapes look really beautiful once things have been rendered around you up close, but there were so many times where I'd find a nice scenic spot and look out over the landscape only to be underwhelmed by gross, flat, muddy textures. And can we talk about these trees for a second? I do not like the look of these trees. All of the other trees in the game look great, but the, this one tree design, I don't know, just looks super ugly to me. You know what, to prove a point, we're going to review some Legends Arceus trees together. Welcome to the Hisui Arboricultural Review. <laughs> okay, we've got a nice plump little 
orangey fluffy tree there. That's excellent. Six out of seven out of 10, I would say. Over here, we've got a green tree. It's very green. I like that. Uh, 8.5 out of 10. And then we've got this guy. What? what is up with these pine looking trees? I just find the shadows to be so harsh and jagged. So it's a three, uh, it's, a, it's a two out of 10. Despite my complaints about the landscapes in the game, there are so many more changes that have been included that I love. For example, Pokemon no longer need to forget moves and can simply switch in and out which moves they want to have active at any point in time. You can choose to evolve Pokemon whenever they're ready by evolving them straight from the menu. Jinx have this WTF face every time you enter battle with them. You can change the name of your Pokemon from the menu whenever you want, meaning that if I get sick of my Krikatoon being called Chepstachio, I could just change it then and there. And in terms of battle mechanics, the inclusion of move order stacking depending on speed and attack choice, along with agile and strong style attacks, really rewards you for sticking with certain Pokemon and moves whilst adding subtle complexity that isn't essential, but can have a really resounding effect on the outcome of battles. And I think easily my favorite minor change or touch of all is that you can just have your whole party hanging out with you all at once. Which I don't know why, because they're not really doing anything, but having even these minor animations and being able to throw them out of their Pokeballs in front of you, it really sells the point that you're on a grand adventure together. Okay, I think I've definitely ranted enough, so I'll just touch on one more thing. Something this game does that I absolutely love is it's taken a lot of the lore and myths behind a lot of the Pokemon and it's incorporated them into the quests and side quests that fill out the entire game. I definitely think that it could do more with this and I don't know, I think if they continue this in future games and kind of take what they've already done in the animated series by having these little mini stories that surround Pokemon or surround the way that Pokemon live. I personally find this stuff to be super compelling because it provides context and insight into the world, giving it meaning rather than it just being a catch em all slog fest. If future games can combine free exploration with maybe some gym battles that are optional plus lore rich story beats, I'm going to be one happy little Bidoof. I'm really excited to keep playing through the early stages of this game. I do worry that the gameplay Pokedex loop might get too repetitive in late game, but I'm excited to keep playing and find out what awaits me because there's so much I haven't seen yet. Please let me know what you think about the game. I'd love to hear your thoughts after you've so kindly taken the time to listen to mine. And I'm now going to go follow this Wormpool and let it take me to its secret kingdom. Goodbye.